I am Dr. G. G. Ratna, working as assistant professor in the Department of Food Technology, Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology, Coimbatore. I welcome you all for the dairy engineering course. As we know that, so dairy processing sector is one of the important processing sector in the food processing field. So the dairy processing is very important to the food as it as the shelf life of the product is very very less. So we have to give some processing inputs to maintain the shelf life of the product and to improve the acceptability of the product as well as the quality of the product. So India is the largest producer of the milk and also the consumer of the milk in worldwide. And India has a very big contribution towards to the milk processing sector in the worldwide. So today's class, we are going to see an important topic in the dairy engineering course. So that is the pasteurization. So about the pasteurization and its principles, objectives and different types and methods of pasteurization and also its application in the food and also the effect of pasteurization in the foods. So what will happen if we are applying the pasteurization technique and what will be the result and what will be the quality and also the nutritional changes that takes place in the product end product after the application of the pasteurization. So before going to the pasteurization, we should ensure that where how the raw milk which is converted into an end product and what are the processing steps which is available in the conversion of the raw milk into an end product end product as well as a value added product as a, as a by product etc so coming towards to the so we have a different kinds of milking animals we can obtain the milk from the cow buffalo a cow buffalo sheep goat and also other kind of animals even human so the different milk products have its own uh, the composition nutritional composition as well as the composition so the majority of the milk products it contains more overly the, uh, the the moisture content as a major percentage so it has a 80 to 85 percentage moisture and the to total solid not fat we call it as a SNF 8.5 percentage and the fat percent which is depends on the milching animal for example if it is a cow the fat percentage may vary from 3 to 3.5 and if it is a buffalo the fat percentage varies from 5 to 5.5 and we are going to for a standardization of the milk so standardization in the sense uh, as per the regulations which is given by the FSSA the standard milk should contain a SNF of that is the solid not fat of 8.5 percentage and a fat of 4.5 4.5 percentage so we are going for a standardization process for that so the nutritional composition of the milching animals it is depends upon the the feed which they are taking in the cattle farms so the cattle farms we are giving some sort of the the wheat brands and also the oil cakes and some uh, green fodders to enhance the nutritional composition of the milk as well as the color of the the carotenoid pigments and also the pigments which is responsible for the color of the milk and after that it is transported towards to the uh, local uh, vendors as well as the societies and uh, collection centers and from that the collection centers the milk is transported to the reefer vans that is the refrigerator vans or a normal van normal containers or tanker uh, tanker lorries where the milk is transported towards to the industries or the government bodies so if it is a reefer vans the reefer vans means the name itself indicates the refrigerator vans it contains a a temperature condition and RH condition of more than 95 percentage relative humidity and 4 degrees 4 to 6 degrees Celsius the temperature inside the uh, tankers reefer vans where the milk is transported towards the industry uh, directly from the collection centers so the reason is uh, the milk has the raw milk has a shelf life of 4 to 6 hours if you are transporting towards the industry that is far away from the collection centers for example if it is taking eight hours to reach the industry in the sense if it is not a refrigerated van so they are taking the milk towards to a nearby chilling center that is also governed by the uh, private industry or the government bodies so the milk is transported if it is a reefer van it is directly transported towards to the industry and if it is a normal container or tanker lorries it is transported towards the chilling centers where the milk is maintained at, a, at 4 degrees celsius in in the chilling centers and then it is transported towards to the dairy industries and dairy industries they are converting the raw milk initially they store the milk and they convert the raw milk into a different products like the the milk normal milk skim milk removal of fat and uh, toned milk double toned milk based on the percentage of fat and milk powders the value added products cheese butter ghee 
and uh, different uh, kinds of uh, value-added milks, flavored milks, etc. And it is uh, uh, packaged in a proper manner and it is stored once again in a refrigerator condition. It is further processed and it is transported towards to the market and it reaches the consumer. So this is the way of, this is the flowchart which is the milk gets processed and how it reaches to the consumer. And this is the dairy value chain of that is present in India. So dairy value chain, as I mentioned, in 19 in the mid of 1970s to 1990s, there is a scarcity of the milk towards to the uh, urban peoples. The rural people they are getting the milk, but the urban people they they do not receive the milk because of the uh, various uh, transportations and improper areas where the milk cannot be transported. So like likewise. So, Dr. Varkis Kurian, he is the man who is responsible for the, the white revolution that takes place in, in India during the 1970s to 1980s. And he is the person who brought the white revolution. He fulfilled the needs of the, both the urban people and rural people by creating a value chain, that is a dairy value chain. And he transported, he makes a chain that can once the milk is milched from the farmers, it is transported towards to the uh, local vendors or the chilling units and it is directly transported towards to the dairy plant where it is gets into a product and it reaches the consumers in both the urban and the rural people where they are get all kinds of milk products. So that is the white revolution that is uh, who is the man is the Dr. Varkis Kurian. And this is the, as I told, the milk collection about the milk collection. So the farmers, they give the milk towards the vendors or VMC centers, collection centers, and sub centers, that is a chilling unit, and it is transported towards to the factory, and where the processing of the milk takes place. So this is the milk packaging in the production center. So this is the processing usually take, that takes place. Reception, where the milk is stored at a 4 degrees Celsius, and after that, that is the cooling. It is uh, stored at a 4 degrees Celsius. And after the clarification or preheating. So clarification or preheating in, this, in the sense, removal of the suspended solid particles or the removal of the non-soluble solid particles that is present in the milk. That is the clarification process. And after that, preheating. So you are going for a pasteurization process. In pasteurization, you need to heat the milk from towards 63 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Celsius, that is the pasteurization temperature, where you are, so the product which is coming, incoming product which have a temperature of 4 degrees Celsius, so for that purpose, you are taking the, you are taking the milk towards the preheating chamber, where they heat the milk from 4 degrees Celsius towards to the 40 degrees Celsius. And standardization, as I told, standardization, the, as per the regulations, as per the laws from the FSSA, the standard milk which contains 8.5% solid not fat and 4.5% fat. So for that purpose, you are adding one or more constituents. For example, if it is a cow milk, it has a fat percentage of 3.5. So you are adding a con one or more constituents towards to the milk and you are enhancing the fat percentage to 4.5%. So that is called the standardization process. And after that, you are going for a pasteurization process, as I mentioned. So today, we are going to discuss about this pasteurization process specifically, and processing, further processing like further processing like the homogenization process, and the finished product, packaging, and storage or distribution. In processing, we can get a different kinds of products. So pasteurization, you are heating the milk, you are destroying the microorganisms. You are heat, heating the milk in an acceptability manner, and after that, it can be the processing involves it can that, that is the homogenization process that is distribution of the fat globules in a uniform manner inside the milk and then you can convert the milk into a different products as I told the skim milk milk powder butter ghee cheese depends on the needs of the consumer and coming towards to the pasteurization so pasteurization is a relatively mild heat treatment in which food is heated to below 100 degrees celsius so pasteurization is a process which destroys all the microorganisms which that is present in the milk so it is a thermal preservation technique so one of the thermal preservation technique that made the milk towards to enhance the shelf life or maintain the shelf life of the product so the pasteurization process that inhibits the enzymes that is present inside the milk and also the enzymes which is responsible for the, so the enzymes catalyze the spoilage mechanism. So pasteurization inhibits the 
enzymes and also the micronisms that is present in the milk. So we have a target micronism that is present in the milk. That target micronisms can be destroyed by using the pasteurization process. So before going for a pasteurization process, you should know about the acid acidity of the foods. That is, there are three types. One is low acid foods, medium acid foods, and high acid foods. So milk under milk comes under the category of low acid food. So it has a pH of 6.5 to 6.7. So it is nearly towards to the neutral. So the pasture, the pH of the milk that decides the shelf life of the milk. So the pH, if it is nearly towards the neutral, so it can be considered as a highly perishable product, and the shelf life of the product may be maximum one day. So, and if it is a medium acid food, medium acid food have a pH range of 2.7 to 4.5, and it may be considered as an intermediate perishable foods and the shelf life may be 7 days or between maximum of 7 to 15 days and coming towards the high acid food so high acid food usually what they do uh, the ph range is less than 2.7 so it can be considered as a the, the example is the bottled pickles so the shelf life may be 6 months to 1 year it depends on the conditions which we are storing so milk under comes under the category of a perishable product which because it consider con consists of a more amount of moisture content so the pasteurization technique which inhibits the enzymes as well as the microorganisms it will maintain the shelf life of the milk it will increase the shelf life from one day to three day and three day to seven day it depends upon the processing condition that is the time and temperature combination which we are using here so after pasteurization we are uh, so before going going that the inventor of pasteurization is the Louis Pasteur. So he identified the pasteurization technique for the wine preparation. So to inhibit the to destroy all the pathogenic microorganisms, he identified the pasteurization for the wine preparation. So he identified two time and temperature combination that is 60 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes and 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. So this is the two types of we have a three types of pasteurization method so one is the ltlt and another one is the hstst and and the last one is the uhst so before going that we we should have the our objective so to render milk safe for the human consumption by destruction of the only pathogenic microorganisms to improve the keeping quality of the milk so with less minimal less or minimal quality changes or nutritional changes that is present in the milk by heating that destroying the target microorganism that is the coxella burnetii as i told the target microorganism that is present in the milk is coxilla burnetii and mycobacterium tuberculosis. So by pasteurization technique we are destroying these microorganisms, both coxilla burnetii and mycobacterium tuberculosis and formulation of standards. So bacterial destruction that is the target microorganisms and pasteurization helps to uh, in cream line reduction that is less changes to cream volume during heating and also the phosphatase inactivation test. So this phosphatase inactivation test is ensures that we have done a correct pasteurization method towards the preservation of the milk. For example, if you are heating the milk at 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds, it should kill all the microorganisms present in the milk. If it is does not kill and if you are getting a falling smell or a off flavor in the sense, you have not done an exact pasteurization method. So if it is like then the phosphatase inactivation test shows a positive result that you are that indicates that you have not done a complete pasteurization technique if it shows negative it shows that you have done a complete pasteurization technique for the destruction of the microorganisms and this is the theory so pasteurization usually uses the the sensible heat so from 0 degrees celsius to 99 degrees celsius uh, we can measure the amount of heat required to rise the temperature from 0 to 99 degrees Celsius by using the formula Q equal to MC the theta A minus theta B that is the temperature difference between as I told from 0 towards to the 99 degrees Celsius the initial temperature of the milk for example 4 degrees Celsius towards you are heating to a 72 degrees Celsius and as I told this is the different methods of pasteurization LTH or LTLT so that is low temperature and longer time duration so 63 degrees celsius for 30 minutes and before cool to 70 degrees 7 degrees celsius and hdst so 71.5 degrees celsius or 72 degrees celsius for 15 seconds before cool to 
10 degrees Celsius. And third method is ultra high temperature. We usually call this ultra high temperature as a one of the sterilization technique. So 138 degrees Celsius for at least two seconds and extreme pasteurization kill all microorganisms that is present and keeping milk in a closed sterile container at room temperature. So this is the method. So the industry people they are using the HTST as a optimum pasteurization technique for the preservation of the milk. The reason is the LTLD you are treating the milk for 60 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. When the product is exposed to higher temperature for a longer time in the sense the quality and the nutritional properties gets minimized. We can find a loss of quality and nutritional pro properties of the food. Even though the milk gets, the shelf life gets increased but we are re receiving a, a less quality product. So that's why the people they go for a HTST. We are only exposing the milk towards to a 15 seconds. And UST, in an, if you are doing all those things in an aseptic condition, the milk can be preserved even for more than 3 months, 6 months. So there is an example of storing the milk in a tetra packs in a UST preservation in aseptic conditions. So depends upon the type of microorganisms, we can extend the the heat thermal preservation technique. For example, if you need to kill a Glosterium botulinum or Glosterium burnetti microorganisms means, so that is a heat resistant microorganism, so you should go for a higher temperature preservation technique. So that is called as a 12D technique. You are treating the milk towards to a higher temperature of more than 130 degrees Celsius for less than one second. So HTST method is also called as a fast pasteurization technique. And as I told, the estimation of uh, the pathogenic microorganisms can be done in the phosphatase inactivation test. And these are the, some examples of the conventional pasteurization treatments. You can see for the different products of the milk, you can have a different time and temperature combination. So that preserves the milk and also it enhances the shelf life of the product. And effect on foods. Coming to the effect on foods, so pasteurization is a mild heat treatment, minor changes to the nutritional and sensory characteristics. Shelf life, few days or weeks, it depends upon the which type of pasteurization methods you are using. And effect on the color, flavor and aroma. So fruit juices, the main problem is color deterioration. As I told, the polyphenol oxidase is responsible for the color deterioration in the fruit juices. So the pasteurization technique in inhibits the enzymes, polyphenol oxidase or any other enzymes that is present in the juice as well as the milk. So the whiteness, is the, as I told, in homogenization process, the uniform distribution of flat globules inside the milk will be taking place. So that changes the color of the milk. So pasteurization is, does not have an effect on the color. And so there are some volatile, loss of volatile aroma compounds because of when you are treating with a higher temperature. So volatile recovery used to produce high quality juices, etc. Effect of vitamin loss, effect of pasteurization on vitamin loss. So losses of vitamin C and carotenoid are minimized. And changes towards to the milk, 5% loss of serum proteins and small changes to the vitamin content. And these are the examples, vitamin losses during pasteurization of the milk and uh, the method HTST and the LHST or LTLD. And thank you for the listening. And uh, I think you have a clear cut idea about the processing of the milk as well as the pasteurization techniques and different types of the methods and uh, how the role of pasteurization have uh, have their role on the mini uh, in increasing the shelf life of the product and minimizing the quality losses thank you